All right, hey, what's going on, everyone? This is going to be my uh, Ring of Honor DVD review for uh, Fade to Black. You know, Fade to Black, uh, this show took place back in Plymouth, Massachusetts, back in September, right before uh, Glory of Honor. And uh, overall, I would say it's a good show. It's better than a lot of Ring of Honor shows from this year, better than Champions Challenge, better than Civil Warfare, better than Buffalo Stampede 2. But overall, it still felt like a B show. Uh, the crowd was pretty good here, surprisingly. Just, they had some uh, pretty rowdy fans here. And uh, but you know the selling point for this DVD is Tyler Black. You know they put a whole bunch of uh, Tyler Black matches. These are definitely his best matches from 2008 uh, on this DVD. So uh, you know if you're a new Ring of Honor fan, you missed out on some of these matches. Uh, definitely buy it because uh, yeah, these Tyler Black matches are all awesome. Uh, a lot of these are match of the year candidates. And uh, there's a five star match in here, and uh, you know his match with Nigel is on here, which is awesome. So I think everyone needs to check this out if, if you haven't been uh, you know collecting ROH DVDs. Uh, over the last couple of years, so I would say I would just say that. But yeah, all right. So fade to black. We start off with uh, Eddie Edwards. Eddie Edwards cut a promo at the beginning of the show, which was good. You know, I, I, on the mic. Like if, if you told me that Edwards sucked on the mic, like I wouldn't necessarily disagree with you. I think his promo was still feel kind of forced. He's still trying to get comfortable, but I'll probably give him an A for effort. I think he's going to get better as time goes on. So uh, yeah, but Edwards, I'm really really high on him. There, they're pushing him pretty hard. He just wants survival of the fittest. And he had a match against Eric Stevens. Now, I'm not the high on Eric Stevens anymore. He's lost a lot of weight. He's definitely changed his style. He's definitely, uh, you know, not as stiff as he used to be. He hasn't really gotten a chance to have a, have a lot of great matches. But, you know, him and uh, him and Edwards just had a really, really good opening round match. This might have been, or opening match, this might have been one of the better openers that ROH has had all year. Uh, probably not as good as the Stevens uh, El Generico match from the uh, previous show, but it was still. You know, really, really good stuff. The best I've seen Stevens look in a long time. And uh, Edwards uh, continues to impress, continues to get better as he recovers from the uh, elbow surgery that he had last year. Um, all right, so next up, let's go move on to Kyle O'Reilly versus Austin Aries. This is kind of like a uh, teacher versus student type of match, you know, veteran type of, uh, you know, the uh, veteran Austin Aries, you know, trying to school the uh, the, the green Kyle O'Reilly, that type of matchup. You know, at the time, I'm not so sure if they signed O'Reilly to the contract. So this is kind of like a tryout match for him. And he looked impressive. You know, Aries said, you know, Kyle O'Reilly, I know you kick really hard, but if you want to beat me, you're going to have to kick ultra hard. You know, Aries came out with this redhead uh, ballet, so he, he was kind of trying to impress her the whole match. So that, that was pretty much the storyline of the match. O'Reilly didn't look spectacular. Uh, this just didn't get enough time, but uh, while it lasted, it was uh, very, very impressive stuff. A nice, fun match to watch. So uh, let's move on. We had Necro Butcher and Sean Davari uh, challenging Kevin Steen and Colt Cabana in the first blood match. Now, this is pretty much just done to make uh, Steen and Karina look like a uh, dominant tag team. And, uh, yeah, I, I mean, uh, Necro Butcher got busted open after the first five minutes, so, you know, that's pretty much what it was. All right, next up we have Roderick Strong versus The Prodigy, Mike Bennett. You know, The Prodigy uh, on HCNet, they're really hyping this guy up. And, uh, you know, I, this is like the first chance I had to uh, take a look at this guy. And I would say he's... Uh, He's got a lot of potential. He's got a great look to him. He, he kind of reminds me of Roderick Strong a little bit. Like they both look very, very similar in size and stature. But you know, this is not a good showing for Mike Bennett because uh, Roderick pretty much dictated the tempo, pretty much controlled the whole match. So you know, I, Mike, Mike Bennett really didn't get to show a lot of what he could do. He, he did show signs of uh, you know greatness, though. Some of the some of the things that uh, he did look very, very impressive when he did get the chance to to get some offense in. But overall. You know, still a good match. I like what I saw, but, you know, I need to see more of the Prodigy Mike Bennett to uh, get a feel for him. I'm not so sure uh, if this guy could be the ROH champion within a year. I know on AGNet he promised that within 12 months so he's definitely going to find himself as the uh, Ring of Honor champion. So we'll see what happens there. All right, next up we have the tag team title match. We have Kings of Wrestling versus Cole Cabana and El Generico. This is good. You know, this this is really good. Nice, fast-paced action. Cabana and Generico. Um, you know, teaming up once again, and they put on another impressive showing. Uh, there's some really, really good chain wrestling from uh, Cabana. I'm sorry, uh, yeah, Cabana. Cabana got a lot of uh, nice offense in there. He looked, got a lot of nice hot tags. Uh, Generico and uh, Claudio Casanelli, really, really good stuff between them. Some nice arm drags, some good chain wrestling, uh, some nice high spots from Generico. Just a very, very fast paced match. I, I, I really enjoyed it. I, I felt like this could have been the match of the night if I had a better finish. Uh, they just worked up to a better finish. But, yeah, like like I said, though, the, just a, a great match there. I think it's kind of underrated. So, a, a solid three and three quarters uh, from those guys. All right, next up we have the uh, non-title match. We got Tyler Black versus uh, Christopher Daniels. Uh, th th this is good. It went through a 30-minute time limit draw. You know, Tyler Black was basically, uh, I would say he got more heat in this match than he did at Glory of Honor. So, uh, 
yeah, the fans were chanting to him, NXT, future jobber, and then, you know, halfway through the match, uh, Black started doing the Cena stuff, he went for the STFU, he went for the, uh, you can't see me, so uh, as the match progressed, though, it seemed like Cena, Cena was getting more heat than Tyler Black, because they were chanting, Cena sucks, so that was pretty interesting, but yeah, overall, this crowd, this crowd was pretty good, actually, I, I, so yeah, I, I gotta give them the credit there, but uh, overall, the match was good, it was very, very fast pace they worked a nice match for a half hour but as far as christopher daniels goes let me say this i've kind of come to this conclusion like if it's not a big ultra app like if it's not a big ultra you know big matchup where like uh you know wwe and tna representatives uh might have the chance of watching it and you know for this show no one no one was gonna watch it it felt like a beast show so i feel like he doesn't really put out that hard put out as much as he should um i don't know he, he doesn't work a very very stiff style he works a very very safe and uh, but a fluid style though I, I feel like he's kind of uh, which kind of works for him because you know he's about 40 years old and he's still in great shape he doesn't show any signs of uh, you know uh, wear and tear really from, from what I've seen but you know him and Black worked a pretty good match you know there, there wasn't like a lot of near falls like it didn't it didn't reach that amazing level so uh, that's pretty much what it was and uh, I, I felt like they could end I feel like Christopher Daniels probably should have got the win here. You know, if Black was going to leave and go to the WWE so abruptly, I would have had Daniels win the match with the best moonsault ever. Or, you know, just just just, just to give him some momentum heading into his, uh, you know, big matchup with Davey Richards that would take place in Chicago the next month. But, you know, uh, after the show, you know, Roger Strong came out. You know, they, they started setting up uh, Christopher Daniels versus Roger Strong down the road for the uh, ROH title. And, uh, you know, my one problem with Daniels is he, he keeps on calling himself the best in the world. And uh, I, I just not, I'm just not sure if that's uh, the right way to go. Because uh, when he says it, you know, a large percentage of the fans boo. Because, you know, people just don't believe him. So, uh, but personally for me, I think Christopher Daniels works better as a, as a heel. I just think he's a lot more edgier. He's great on the mic as a heel. I just think it's, a, it's more of a natural fit for him. I feel like we've seen this kind of match before with, you know, Daniels. Uh, kind of reminiscent of Daniels versus Punk. They did this back in uh, 2005 when, when Punk was a champion heading for the WWE. It was like kind of Christopher Daniels' job. To take the belt off of uh, CM Punk, but uh, you know the same kind of, kind of reminiscent of, of this because you know Black is headed for the WWE as well. So um, that's fade to black. I, I enjoyed the show. Like I said, I, I definitely think everyone needs to pick it up uh, just for the Tyler Black matches, and the overall show is pretty enjoyable as well. All right, guys. So let's move on to Glory by Honor Nine. This is out on DVD. It's uh, it's a great show. I, I still think it's one of the top ten ROH shows of the year. Even though it was slightly disappointing, some of the matches kind of underdelivered. But uh, we start off with the Briscoes matches. The Briscoes, uh, we had Jay Briscoe versus uh, Kenny King, and then we had Mark Briscoe versus Red Titus. I thought these matches were good. They were nice, short, fun matches to get the crowd into it. You know, they just did the Briscoes versus King and Titus at Super Card of Honor, so uh, it was nice to switch it up into something different. I, I enjoyed the matches. They didn't blow anyone away, but uh, they were fun for what they were. I would just say that. All right. So next up, we have the double chain match. We had Kevin Steen and Steve Carino versus El Generico and Cole Cabana. Uh, during the live taping for this show, I had some problems with my uh, contacts, and I started to get a headache, and I couldn't see a lot of what was going on. And uh, I just I just had a tough time watching it live. <laughs> I actually called it a dog collar match in my review. That's how fucked up uh, I was that morning. But yeah, uh, overall, this this is a great match. I, I really feel like this was a uh, the best match of the night by far. I'm going to give it four and a quarter stars. I really feel like this really progressed the storyline even more. With, you know, Steen taking Generico's mask. I thought that was awesome. There were some awesome spots in the match with uh, Kevin Steen, you know, ripping uh, Generico from the top rope and, and blasting him through the table. Uh, they, they tied up Cocabana with both chains, had him on the middle of the ring, and then uh, Generico made the save. You know, a very dramatic match, a very, very bloody match. Uh, some awesome suplexes from Generico here. He did some awesome Tiger, Tiger uh, German suplexes and, and stuff like that. And, uh, I mean, Cabana played a nice baby face here. It, it, was, it told a good story of good versus evil. And uh, I just really enjoyed it. So uh, probably leaving some stuff out. But yeah, that was a match of the night by far, in my opinion. Uh, Eddie Edwards versus Sean Devari. You know, I feel like they could have booked Edwards in a better matchup here. It wasn't impressed with Devari. I thought this kind of sucked uh, whenever Devari was on the offensive end. But it, at the same time, th this benefited Edwards. If you, if, you put it, if you had put Edwards in there with some generic guy just to have a four-star match, this pro that probably wouldn't have done that much for him, but uh, I feel like here he, he really got a good win as a baby face or a face, whatever you want to call him. Uh, I really feel like this match really uh, made him connect with the fans. It was just a good, good win for him, you know, because it really made him feel like, you know, Edwards has a potentially uh, could potentially play the role of a hero uh, down the road. You know, he's facing, uh, you know, Davari, you know, he's part of the, uh, he used to be part of that Muhammad Hassan uh, faction in, in the WWE, so, uh, 
it's just a, a good win for Eddie Edwards to uh, uh, to upset him or not upset him, but you know to to get a nice victory over uh, the evil Devard. All right, so all right, all right, next up we have the battle of the best. We have Austin Aries versus Christopher James. Now, you know, this is the most disappointing match of the night. You know, th these two guys said that they were going to steal the show right before the match started. So the expectations were high. Now, uh, I just found out, you know, during the match, and it's very, very easy to see as well, uh, Aries injured his hip, like, within the first couple minutes. And, uh, you know, he, he really looked like he had a tough time, you know, sucking it up and trying to get through the match. So uh, you got to give Aries credit just for continuing to wrestle. But uh, I feel like Daniels could have done a little bit more just to carry uh, Aries through the match if, if he knew he was hurt. Um, just kind of disappointing, you know. You, you figured these guys would have had a better match. You know, these are two of the best workers uh, that we've seen over the decade from TNA and, and from Ring of Honor. So, I mean, just kind of disappointing. Had an awesome finish, though. You know, Aries actually did the 450 splash. Daniels got his knees up, countered that, and then uh, they found themselves on the top rope. And, and Daniels actually did the, executed the Angels' wings. From the top rope, which was uh, an awesome finish to a pretty dull match, so I, I would say that I pro probably give it like a three and a half stars, a very very soft three and a half stars. You know, these guys are so good in the ring. You know, even even them at their, uh, I wouldn't say they were at the worst, but I, I feel like they could have this just could have been a lot better. You know, that's, that's all I could really say. You know, I feel like if this if this had delivered, you know, th this match, this whole show could have, uh, you know, hit that before dishonor standards. But you know, if this, but like I said, if this. This was kind of the break, make or break match, and the match didn't deliver, so I really didn't have a chance to hit that hit that level. All right, so next up we had the Kings of Wrestling versus Shelton Benjamin and Charlie Haas. This is pretty much just as good as I expected. You know, when this match was announced, I didn't have high expectations, and the reason I say that is because of Charlie Haas. You know, I've never been like that high on Charlie Haas. You know, world's greatest tag team in 2003. They were an awesome tag team. Give them credit. You know, they were the best tag team in the world. I really, really thought they made SmackDown, you know, a must-see show at the end of 2002 and 2003. I, I thought WWE split these guys up way too soon. But, you know, I, I really like watching this match. I was kind of thinking to myself, you know, how awesome would it be if they brought in Shelton Benjamin and, you know, let him go out there with Davey Richards or Roderick Strong or, uh, you know, Tyler Black, Austin Aries, and, and let those guys have a, a great Ring of Honor World title match. I was just, I, that was kind of crossed my mind the whole time I rewatched this match. But this overall match was good. Uh, I mean... It wasn't amazing though. There was there was uh, very very slow at some points, but uh, you know the crowd was great. You know Haas, uh, some good uh, some nice intensity from Haas in this match. He's, he's a very very intense individual. He tries really hard. Some good mat wrestling with him and uh, Claudio in the match. I thought some of the stuff he did with Claudio when they were slapping each other felt kind of forced. Though. That's just my opinion. But uh, yeah, I mean Shelton looked great though. Shelton hit some. Uh, Shelton's just a phenomenal wrestler, and uh, you know when when he hit the uh, suplex from the top rope where he jumped onto the top turnbuckle, that came off really really well. And uh, you know whenever the world's greatest tag team tried some double team maneuvers, it, it came off nice. The finish definitely hurt the match. Definitely a weak finish. Uh, definitely sets up a rematch though. I mean hopefully these two guys can go out there and kind of uh, not redeem themselves because this was still a great match. I still give it four stars. It's just I think some people kind of had uh, higher expectations for it, but it, it was still great though. And next up, we had Tyler Black versus Roderick Strong. This is for the Ring of Honor World Championship. And uh, a lot of people were disappointed by this. Yeah, I mean, I kind of agree. I mean, they didn't get that much time. Uh, however, though, you know, they they kind of uh, had a fun match, though. It was very, very fast-paced. They, they did a lot of good things in the match. You know, the one counter that Roderick hit to the, uh, what was it, the guy's last gift to the buckle bomber. I forget what it was, but Roderick did a beautiful counter here where he pretty much flipped Roderick Strong in the air and, and did a, a, a knee buster to his uh, gut. I thought that was awesome. You know, the buckle, the double buckle bomb spot was great. I mean, th these two guys just worked a very, very uh, fast-paced match. The thing that hurt the match was the interference. There's no reason to have Truth Martini in, in the House of Truth get involved for this match. There was no reason to do it at this point. You know, this this should have just been about the championship. Uh, you have a you have heel versus heel out there. They're, they could have just scrapped that whole thing with uh, Truth Martini getting involved. But at the same time, I guess they want to give Roderick Strong and and give him. Some, uh, get, you know, just give them something that the fans can identify with, you know, uh, going into the future. Because obviously they need to start building them up, so maybe that was a good decision. I'm not sure. But Terry Funk's involvement definitely hurt the match. Uh, this just could have been a lot better. Uh, I, I would say that this is probably more of a funner match to watch than the Super Card of Honor match that they had. But, you know, it's, Roger Strong actually defeated Black for the belt. Uh, basically just kicked the shit out of him. That was the ending. He did like a running, uh, what do you call it, like a running, a running kick uh, to end the match. Uh, you know, overall... I feel like it was very, very predictable. I felt like uh, Ring of Honor needed to do something really, really uh, wacky here. You know, kind of a uh, unpredictable kind of finish because, you know, I think everyone pretty knew, pretty much knew Roderick was going to win. But at the same time, I guess this is a case where, you know, it's better to play safe than to take a chance to do something stupid. 
So, uh, you know, give, congratulations to Roger Strong. He's a new Ring of Honor champion and uh, felt it was very, very well-deserved. 